Have you ever seen these local real estate agents or brokers in your market listing all of the foreclosures in your area and you're like, how do they do that? Well, stay tuned. It's caught in the crossfire. Hey, what's up guys? This is Steve with Steve Invest, real estate broker as well as real estate investor. My passion is to help other real estate agents, real estate brokers, as well as real estate investors make a lot of money in this business and ultimately achieve financial freedom. So what is an REO? An REO stands for real estate owned, meaning the bank took that property back from a borrower because of default. Now it's considered a foreclosure and or a bank asset. Now, once a bank takes the property back through foreclosure, they're gonna wanna get it off their books as quickly as possible because they're not in the business to hold property. They're in the business to lend money. So when they get these properties back, their goal is to get it off the books as fast as possible and they're gonna have to hire real estate agents in order to do this. So if this is gonna be your target market, you're gonna to wanna to do three things initially. First, you're gonna to wanna to build your professional resume. That's gonna include your bio, uh, it's gonna include your sales information, and it's also going to include uh, your financial capability. The second thing you wanna do is gather all the information and contact information for large banks, asset management companies, as well as small banks that you're gonna be contacting. The third thing you're gonna to need to do is apply to all of them. So you're gonna send in your resume via hard mail, email, and then follow up with a phone call. Now this is where 95% of your competition is gonna stop. They're gonna send in their applications and they're just gonna sit back and wait, and they're gonna wait, and they're gonna wait, but not you. You're gonna be the other 5%. The 5% that's gonna be aggressive. You're gonna be on the phones with asset managers and or bank managers trying to get their assets. How are we gonna do this? We're gonna make weekly calls. You or somebody of your staff is gonna call once a week into these asset manage management companies or asset managers and just get in front of these people. Again, this is extremely important in order to start listing REO properties. The person that's gonna be more aggressive and attentive toward these asset management companies and or bank managers or asset managers are gonna actually get the listings. Now you may be thinking it's the same real estate agents that are in my local market that are getting all the foreclosure listings. Yeah, that may be true, however, they're not necessarily doing a great job. I mean, you can probably see in your local MLS, they probably have crap pictures, not necessarily a good write-up. And overall, their response and their communication with other real estate agents is terrible. I know you've probably experienced this if you had the buy side on any of these foreclosures. So you're gonna come in, you're gonna provide better service than these guys. When you're reaching out to these asset managers, you're gonna have to come in with a hook. You're gonna have to come in and ask, what can you do to help them right now? You're gonna wanna ask them if they need any valuations done on any of their properties, meaning a BPO, Broker's Price Opinion. I'm actually gonna do a whole other video on this as well, where we're gonna go into detail of actually how you can make anywhere from $40 to $100 doing broker price opinions. So you're gonna ask these asset managers if you can go in and do a valuation for them, even for free. All you're trying to do is get a foot in the door with these people to show them your capabilities, your service, and so forth. Now, as time progresses, you, you should be starting to build some rapport. If you're calling these people every week, uh, many times they're gonna lead you to voicemail. You can leave a quick voicemail. But, you know, they're human beings on the other side. You can joke around with them, have fun with them, start to learn more about their personal life if possible. You're going to want to befriend the asset managers. And when you start to build such rapport, just say, you know what? I know you have your main three guys in our market that you're using. How about we do this? How about you just give me one opportunity? I'm not asking you for dozens of foreclosures or dozens of, of bank assets to list. I'm just asking you for one. Try me out. I will make a promise to you with this one asset, if you give me the opportunity, that I will outperform all your other guys. And there's no commitment that you have to provide to me even if I do. How's that sound? And then you just wait. And wait. And don't talk. Now that's how I got my first asset management company. They, the name of that company was called Brighton. I think since then they either merged with another company or got bought out and um, that was our first entry into listing bank assets and it worked. Now that is just one asset management company. 
now that you got that one secured, you don't stop. There's plenty of them out there. Again, I'm gonna provide you guys a link below. It's gonna have a handful of asset management companies you can click on, apply, and then get on the phones, guys. You don't have to stop after you get one asset management company under your belt or even a small bank or whatever the case is. You can build off of it. There's a ton of banks out there that need good real estate agents. And if you can provide those services, if you can provide excellent services, you stand a great chance, but you have to be persistent. You have to stay in front of these people. You have to call weekly. The next thing is you gotta make sure that you have a team in place. That's gonna consist of multiple parties. Asset managers are very demanding. You're gonna have to go out and do what's the initial inspection. Now, I always recommend you either bring somebody or even a security officer to this, depending on your area at least always have somebody else going with you because this is the first inspection. You don't know if anybody's gonna be there. You don't know if there's gonna be a squatter in place. You don't know if the previous owner is still living there is disgruntled and pissed off. So always bring somebody with you because you're gonna have to go ahead and inspect that property, see if anybody's living there and you're gonna have to report back to the asset manager. I'd say 80% of the listings that we took or REO listings that we took had a ton of trash uh, a lot of times the sellers they're disgruntled they don't care they're picking up they're leaving the next day and uh, they leave a lot of things behind furniture clothing trash all over the place so you're going to want to have a good team in place that's going to be able to come out trash that property out as quickly as possible get a dumpster do what they need to do in order to get this property in uh, better shape third person is always have a good handyman in place um, a lot of times asset managers will ask you your opinion on safety or if there's anything that you could do to make the property look a little bit better. So you're going to want to have uh, a good handyman that can probably go in, fix some drywall, do a little bit of paint. Um, some asset managers don't want to spend any money on stuff like that. Next person on your team, you're going to want to have a good cleaner. Um, I think that all real estate shows better even if it's you know in rough shape, if it's clean. So make sure that you have a good cleaner on staff. The next person is a general contractor who is essentially licensed to a lot to do uh, bigger projects for residential real estate or even commercial real estate. Um, we've always had a general contractor on our team. Um, big thing in Florida were pools that didn't have fences or fences blew over, or screen line eyes um, were, were blown out, and by law those have to be secured. So instead of uh, doing fences and so forth. Um, we would actually have our general contractor build a platform over the pool this way nobody would sneak in and drown on the property which would cause more liability for the bank lawn and land maintenance make sure you have a good person for this uh, some properties you're going to pull up to and you're going to see grass four feet high they're going to have to come out with a brush hog and and really knock this stuff down they're going to need to trim up shrubs trees and really just clean the property up again curb appeals everything and you're also going to want to make sure that they're maintained on a weekly or monthly basis to keep the lawn and, and shrubs and everything looking clean and nice. And the last person on your REO team, you should have somebody that's gonna go out and do the weekly inspections for you. Um, a lot of asset management companies as well as banks and small banks, they want weekly inspections. Uh, some even want twice a week and it can be a pain in the ass. So you're gonna to wanna to have somebody that's gonna go out, inspect the properties, make sure there's no break-ins. They're also gonna to have to take pictures, date stamped pictures, and report that back to the asset management company. Now that's kind of grunt work. That should not be for you. That should not be your job, what you should be doing, because your job should be back on step one, which is going after these asset managers and building up more inventory, getting in touch with more asset management companies and trying to get them to list with you. And last, um, treat these properties as if they're any other kind of properties i know you know starting in the beginning of this conversation a lot of these uh real estate brokers and agents they do a crap job they they filter through these properties they don't they really don't market these properties how they should um, granted they're all going to be priced competitively and they should sell fairly fairly quickly however you guys need to treat these listings just like any other listing so get the drone shots get the high quality photos do what you can to stand apart and uh, also video put a package together and email it to the asset management company especially after your first listing and just sh and do that routinely with every listing that you take it, again it's going to set you guys apart from your competition so again if you're starting with one listing in an asset management company and you're providing these links and videos and updates and you got the other guy over here that they barely hear from he's selling their real estate 
but they barely hear from them and they're not doing as good a job as you, what do you think is going to happen? Inevitably, if you're doing a fantastic job going above and beyond, you're going to start getting their market share. You may be the top dog after a couple months, six months, or even a year of listing all those properties in your local market. So my question to you guys is, what's your experience dealing with other listing agents who are listing REO property? And as mentioned, start right now. There's going to be a link below. Click on it. You're going to actually be able to read some more content about listing REO properties. Um, take a look at it at the very bottom. There's going to be a handful of asset management companies that you can go ahead and apply for. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but I can tell you it's going to be rewarding. And if you found this information valuable, please subscribe. Hit the little bell as well. I appreciate it. We're going to have more videos coming at you. Uh, the next one's probably going to be on BPO's broker price opinions. So uh, make sure you look out for that one as well. I know other local real estate agents in our market that are making upwards of $6,000 a month just doing BPOs, which were essentially valuations of uh, bank assets. So thanks again for checking out this video. Until next time. <laughs>